Hello everyone, welcome to Inconvenient Truths by Jennifer Zeng. October 1st is a big day for many people. In the US and around the world, people learned the shocking news that President Trump and First Lady Melania Trump had tested positive for COVID-19. On Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C., U.S. Representative Scott Perry announced that he had introduced a bill to designate the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, as a transnational organized crime group and to add the CCP to the top international criminal organization target list. In China and elsewhere, people of Chinese heritage are celebrating the traditional mid-autumn festival when family and friends get together to celebrate. In mainland China, CCP leaders were celebrating the 71st anniversary of the founding of its regime. How are these several events interrelated to one another? And how will the future of the U.S. and the CCP be affected today? Let's talk about these issues. First of all, how will Trump's infection affect the U.S. election? Personally, I don't think it will affect the U.S. election that much if he recovers soon. Although Trump will not be able to do his favorite big rally campaigns like before, as he was in relatively good physical shape before he caught the virus, a quick recovery is quite possible. However, if his situation deteriorates, that will make the delicate pre-election battleground more complicated, more difficult to predict. That is why the entire world is holding its breath and watching his status very, very closely. Second, how will Trump's infection affect the relations between the U.S. and the CCP? The CCP's official media maintains a relatively low-key and neutral tone when reporting about Trump's infection. However, on social media platforms, many brainwashed people rejoice over this news. Some say all of the heaven and earth rejoice together. Some say the COVID-19 finally found its right target. Some say so happy. Some say it's late, but it's here. Some say triple happiness, meaning that they were celebrating the Mid-Autumn Festival, the CCP's National Day, and Trump's infection at the same time. Each of these comments got hundreds or tens of thousands of likes, and their celebrations are not limited to words. For example, this shop is offering a discount of 200 to 500 yuan or 30 to 74 US dollars for all their cell phones. And this shop is offering free coffee as a celebration. And watch this video. These people not only took the trouble to make a banner, but also shot and uploaded this video, showing them shouting the content of the banner, happy celebration and congratulations on Mr. and Mrs. Trump's infection of COVID-19. Let's watch another two short clips. <笑>告诉大家一个振奋人心的消息，啊，特朗普他妈的终于得那个新冠病毒了！鼓掌！啊啊！鼓掌！好。Some of you may be wondering how can human beings celebrate a fellow human being's misfortune? Well. All this reflects the CCP's long-term brainwashing achievements. For many, many decades, the CCP has been teaching its people that you should be as ruthless as bitter winter with your enemies. And the U.S. has been always portrayed as China's big, sometimes the biggest, enemy. However, many clear-headed overseas Chinese people are having a totally different perspective about this issue. There is an old saying in China, 
misfortune. That is where happiness depends. Happiness, that is where misfortune underlies. So, although it is a misfortune for Trump to test positive and be hospitalized, this could force the U.S. to once again pay its attention to the CCP's role in not only this pandemic, but also in other CCP-made disasters. The CCP has been killing its own people non-stop ever since its establishment and has been trying to take over the world in recent years after the West allowed, to be, allowed it to become rich. However, for most of the time, many politicians turned a blind eye to the CCP's evil nature and crimes. They treated the CCP like any other normal political party and mistakenly believed that the CCP would become a good guy in the future if only the world helped it to become rich. Worse still, some knew that the CCP was evil but didn't do anything to stop it because the CCP gave them money or gave them opportunities to make big money. So in this sense, we can say that the CCP was able to do so much tremendous evil because the world allowed it. Also in this sense, if President Trump's infection can once again highlight the CCP's murderous nature and actions and make the US and the world more determined to dismantle the CCP, the misfortune can, like the old Chinese saying says, be turned into a good thing. No matter what, let's pray that President Trump and the First Lady recover as quickly as possible. Now, let's move to another big, big event that also happened on October the 1st. Let's watch a short video of U.S. Congressman Scott Perry's speech first. By the way, I was the first person, if not the only one, that published this video on the Internet. This morning I had the honor of introducing a bill in the United States House of Representatives that assigns a title befitting the Chinese Communist Party, that of transnational criminal organization, because that's what they are. They are criminals. This bill, what exact, exactly what it does is it allows us to pl apply the RICO statutes, the racketeering statutes, to those involved with the Communist Party. Whether they're in China or whether they're in the United States of America with real, with real penalties, including prison. Going to prison for criminal activities on behalf of the Chinese Communist Party. This bill eliminates the sovereign immunity of the CCP ensuring that even their diplomats who are working here, if they're involved in criminal activity, they can be subject to this. The CCP cannot be given a pass, cannot be absolved of justice just because it's ruling China. And that's what's happened. Because they can declare themselves the legitimate government of China, they're allowed to get away with it. They're allowed to get away with oppression, concentration camps, uh, all kinds of horrific things that you already know about, whether it's the Falun Gong, whether it's our friends in Mongolia, whether it's taking over Tibet, all of it has to end. And it's criminal activity that must be recognized and stood against by the whole world community and the United States must lead. After I posted this video on YouTube and Twitter, many people said, this is huge. Yes, this is indeed huge. The bill Perry talked about is numbered HR 8491. Although it has not been received by the Congress, I had the privilege of getting a preview copy of it, which I have posted on my website. The bill's title is Designating the CCP as a Transnational Organized Crime Group Act. Section 2 of the bill lists many of the CCP's crimes, including destroying Hong Kong's freedom, human rights violations, flooding the U.S. with deadly fentanyl, covering up the COVID-19 pandemic, and allowing it to spread to the world, IP theft, forced organ harvesting, etc. Section 3 of the bill stipulates that on the date of the enactment of this act, 
the Attorney General shall designate the Chinese Communist Party as a transnational organized crime group. The Director of Federal Bureau of Investigation FBI, shall designate the Communist Party as a top international criminal organization for Department of Justice. From this, we can see that if this bill is passed and enacted, the U.S. will officially designate the CCP as a transnational organized crime group and will use its national power to deal with the CCP's crimes. Section 4 of the bill introduces an amendment for the current U.S. state code, which stipulates that not later than 90 days after the date of the enactment of this act, the U.S. Attorney General shall report to the U.S. House and the Senate the rationale for the designation of the CCP as a transnational organized crime group and the number and extent of a racketeering activity committed, aided, or abated by the CCP. The bill also makes it possible to hold the CCP accountable for crimes it committed more than 15 years ago and eliminates the legal liability protections of the CCP during the investigation of a racketeering activity. Although I'm not a legal expert, I feel that this bill is tremendously important and indeed huge. The so-called Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act or RECO statute that was passed in 1970 is a ready-made tool that the U.S. can utilize to hold the CCP accountable for many of its crimes. The only problem is, will the U.S. as a nation have the will to push this forward? Whether a bill can be passed and then enacted or not depends on how many congressmen and congresswomen will vote for it. As congressmen and congresswomen are elected by common folks like you and me, so every one of us actually has a little bit of power in our hands to decide whether such a bill will be passed or killed in the Congress. Don't you agree? Imagine if such a bill is passed and enacted, what will happen to the CCP? While their people are celebrating their triple happiness, including President Trump's COVID infection, they may not have realized that their triple happiness can turn out to be a triple fatality for the CCP. During the Hong Kong people's protests against the CCP, many Hong Kongers often held up a banner that says heaven will destroy the CCP. With Xi Jinping acting as the chief accelerator of the CCP's demise, I do see that heaven is also accelerating its steps to destroy the CCP. That's all for today. Before you go, please do make sure you not only subscribe to my channel, but also keep on checking whether you are still subscribed. People told me that they got unsubscribed without their knowledge. So, there are many things that we have to fight against, and we are fighting a big battle together. So, please do help me. Thank you. See you soon.